Okay, here is your video for inverse trig functions. So the unit we just finished, we graphed all the trig functions. Now we're gonna do the inverse ones, which means you're reversing um, your input and your output. So that's what we're gonna put in this first line. To graph an inverse function, you are going to switch X and Y. We have done inverse functions before. We did that this year. We're just now doing that with the trig function. Now, we before, whenever we did everything forward, you would input the angle, pi over three, pi over two, pi over six, whatever it was. And what you get back is the sides of the triangle, the square root of three over two, square root of two over two, one, zero, whatever it is. Now we're reversing that. So that means the input is now the side and the output is the angle. Again, today, all we're gonna do is look at where the graphs end up. Literally, that's it. We're not even gonna do any of the problems. Next class, when we do the problems, your answer is gonna be the angle. So your answer is gonna be like pi over three or pi over two, like we're doing this backwards. It's the same thing, but in reverse, okay? So we're gonna fill out a table of values. I left the circle up there because that's what we're gonna do. The only difference is instead of putting those values in for X, we're gonna put them in for Y. Does this make sense? Just reversal, right? So we're gonna put zero pi, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, two pi. We're just gonna go around the circle. Do you remember those little intro worksheets I gave you last unit for all of them? Like we did like one little like intro to the, the function. That's like this, except I put all six of them on one because you've seen all six of them before. So now we're gonna do this backwards. Sign of zero, oh wait, sign is that X or Y? Y, okay, sign of zero is zero. Sign of pi over two, one. Sign of pi, zero. Three pi over two is negative one. And then you're back where you started. So now we're gonna plot those. You have zero, zero, we're gonna start right here. And then you have the point one pi over two. So that's gonna be one and then pi over two is right here. Do you see how I labeled these? Like this would be pi over two and then this is pi, three pi over two, two pi. Do you see how I did that? Like I, I set it up for you. All right, and then zero pi and then negative one, three pi over two. So that's gonna be right here. And then you're back to two pi. And then you can keep the pattern going in the other direction. Okay, hold on a second. Let me draw it and then you'll be able to see it. There we go. You guys are freaking out because I turned the graph sideways, seriously? Okay, so here's the issue. And here's where you want to get out your highlighter or your pen of another color. This is not a function, why not? Does not pass the vertical line test. So we're going to have to restrict it. Now, look at the y-axis. Do you see from here to here is zero to pi over two? From zero to pi over two is the first quadrant, right? Zero to pi over two is quadrant one. This whole like kind of strip right there is quadrant one. From here to here is pi over two to pi. If you go from pi over two to pi, do you see how that's the second quadrant? Okay, because it's like those little strips of space that I dotted off there. This would be two, this would be three, this would be four. And if you rotate backwards, you're gonna go around the circle backwards. So this little strip of space here would be four and then three and then two and then one. I'm not gonna label that on every single one of them. They're all gonna be the same for the, the graphs that we did here. But whenever you restrict it, you always start with quadrant one. So we're gonna get to keep this piece right here. Now, you'll be able to keep a little bit more, but we need to see what direction can we go. 
could I keep going and keep what's in quadrant two? Like, could I keep this little piece? No, it'll fail the vertical line test. So you can't keep that. If you can't keep that, you can't get anything else further there because it's going to cut you off from it. So we're stuck from going that way. But can I go backwards into quadrant four? Yes. Can I go any further than that? No. So you only get to keep this little bit and that's it. So you do want to highlight that, that part that I have. And it doesn't show up real great on the projector, but when I take a picture of this, you can see it, you know, we'll be able to see it. So do you remember how I brought up which functions were even and which ones were odd? And I said there was going to be a day when that came up again. Today's that day. Sine is an odd function and you get to keep what's in quadrant one and quadrant four. And that is the whole thing I'm trying to get across to you today is what quadrants they end up in. And we're going to write out the domain and range for good measure because it's you know, healthy for us, right? So we're going to do the domain and range, but only of the highlighted part. The rest of that stuff doesn't count. We're only keeping the highlighted part. So domain, that's left to right. Our domain is from where to where? Negative one to one. Ooh, do you guys remember how that was the range of the sine function? Now it's the domain of sine inverse. They're backwards. All right, and then your range downwards to upwards, it's from where to where? Negative pi over two to positive pi over two, perfect. Okay, we got through that one. The rest of these should be a little bit easier because we're gonna just do the same thing again. So let's look at cosine. Again, you want to plug in your values from the unit circle, but we're plugging them into y again because it's backwards. An inverse is just a reversal. That's all it is. So when we go around the circle, cosine is x. What's your first x value? One. And then what's the next one? Zero. Negative one, perfect, zero, one, awesome. So we're gonna plot those on the grid. So we end up with one, zero, so that's right here. And then zero pi over two, that's right here. Negative one pi, and then again, you can keep it going in both directions. I always have to turn the paper sideways to like connect it though, because I can't. I, know, I can't do it unless I turn the paper. I always think it looks like a. Um, do you know the DNA strand, like the double helix thing? I feel like that's what it looks like whenever you draw it sideways. Is anybody else see that? I don't know. That's what like my brain sees whenever I look at that. All right. Now we're going to look at what parts we get to keep. You always start with the first quadrant. So we're definitely going to keep this piece. And again, the quadrants are those little strips of space that I dotted off for you. So we're going to keep this part. What other quadrant could we go to? Two, good, you guys are seeing it. We can go to two. Can we go any further? No, so that's it. So cosine is an even function and the quadrants that its range go into are quadrants one and quadrant two. So the reason I bring this up as a heads up and foreshadowing, okay? All the odd ones are gonna be in one and four and all the even ones are gonna be in one and two. That's how you remember it. But I'm gonna draw them and show you why that turns out that way. Yes, ma'am. What's that? Even means it's symmetric to the Y axis. Odd means it's symmetric to the origin. You can remember that odd origin. But when I say even and odd, I mean the original functions, the ones that we did last unit unit 10. Now we're, we're flipping them. All right, and then let's list out our domain and range. Domain is left to right, so that would be where to where. 
Good. And remember how that was the range of the original cosine function. Now we're doing cosine inverse, so we reversed it. And then the range, again, just the highlighted part would be from where to where? Zero to pi, perfect. <coughs> All right, try it again. Now we're doing cosecant. Again, we're gonna plug in for y and get x because we're doing this backwards, it's an inverse function. Okay, I feel like I got everybody calmed down now. You guys are freaker outers. All right, how do we get cosecant from the unit circle? Flip, uh, well, this one would just be y. You're like already ahead. You're like on the next one. All right, we're gonna flip the y value. The first one's zero. You cannot flip to zero, so that would be undefined. Now, on the original function, it was a vertical asymptote. That means here it's gonna be, so, okay, good. Then we're up at the top. Your y value is one if you flip that one and then undefined, and then what comes next? Negative one and then undefined. Again, it's the exact same thing I just reverse the input and output. That's like the definition of what an inverse. So when you go to put this information on the grid, you're gonna have an asymptote at zero. So that's this V axis. Again, it's gonna be horizontal this time. And then you have the point one pi over two. That's right here. And then another asymptote. and then negative one, three pi over two, and then another asymptote. And you can continue that again in both directions. And you're still gonna get those U shapes, except what? They're sideways. And again, I have to turn the paper sideways to do this. I'll flip it back, I'm sorry. I, well, I'm not sorry. Like I just, I can't draw it sideways. That's cute, look at that. The exact same thing, just tilt your head. Yeah, literally that's it. Just, that, that's an inverse, you just flip them. That's what we're doing all six at once. Cause now that I've taught you all six, we can do all six at once. We're just taking them and flipping them. The important part, the part that I, the, the takeaway is what quadrants you end up in. So the highlighting, that's the most important part, right? You always start with quadrant one. So that's this part right here. Can we go into quadrant two? No, it'll fail the vertical line test. That means you can't get to three or four this way either because it won't attach. You can't go any further that direction. Can we go into quadrant four? Yes, we can keep this part. And so that highlighted bit is what we get to keep. So again, cosecant is an odd function. And this is gonna be in quadrants one and four. That's the big takeaway. Like that's what I want you to leave the lesson with is what quadrants they end up in. And then again, I want us to write the domain and range just cause that's not all that hard and it's healthy for us. So we'll go over that. So domain is left to right. We go left to right. It's gonna be negative infinity up to what? Negative one, union. Oh my gosh, hey guys, that's the range from before. Now it's the domain. See how it's the opposite. All right, this range is gonna be a little bit weird though because we're only using the highlighted part. We start here, we're doing downwards to upwards. If we start here, where is this that we're beginning? Yeah, good, negative pi over two. And we're going to positive pi over two, but what value do we have to like leave out? You have to leave out zero because of the asymptote there. So you're skipping over zero. And oh my gosh, secant is gonna look almost the exact same. You ready? You 
You're just filling in the values from the unit circle, just put them in for y instead of x. It's just the other way around. And this time when we go around the unit circle, we're going to flip x value. Perfect. All right, so the first one's one, flip that one. And then what's the next one gonna be? Undefined. And then negative one. Good. And then undefined. And then one. So when you take that information and put it on the grid. You have one zero, so that's right here. And then an asymptote. And then negative one, and then an asymptote, and so does it. So when you go to highlight, you always start with quadrant one. So we're going to keep this part. And then which other quadrant can we go to? Like, could we go backwards into quadrant four here? No. And then, so you can't go any further that direction. So good. So two, it'll be this right here. So those two parts, again, I'm sorry, I know it doesn't, it doesn't show up real great on the projector. Those two parts, quadrant one and two. So secant is even, and so it is in quadrants one and two. And again, I'm just gonna state the domain and range. Domain, negative infinity to negative one, union one to infinity it's the same as cosecant it's what the range was before now it's the domain and then this is the part that's going to look really weird because we're only taking the highlighted part All right stick with me we're almost done we're doing downwards to upwards so where do we start good perfect zero and we're going all the way up to pi. It's going to be zero to pi, but we have to leave out. Perfect. See how easy and quick this goes? And you guys are seeing awesome. You guys rock. So zero to pi, but you had to leave out pi over two because of the L. And then the last two are tangent and cotangent. What are these going to look like? Wiggles, except sideways. Also, when you put in your values here, instead of zero to two pi, it's only gonna be zero to one pi. So we're gonna count by fourths. How do we get tangent from this? Good, y over x, one over zero, or sorry, I said it backwards, take two. Zero over one is zero, good. And then at pi over four, anything over itself, one, and then what? Undefined, and then negative one, and then back to zero. So it's gonna go on negative one, zero, one asymptote, negative one, zero, one asymptote, it's just gonna be sideways. So we're gonna start at zero, zero, and then one pi over four. Okay, so look, pi over four would be right there. It's gonna be kind of like floating in between zero and pi over two. 
and then an asymptote. And then negative one, three pi over four is gonna be right here. Again, it's kind of like floating in between a half a pi and a whole pi. And then zero, and then you can just keep the pattern going. I was trying to draw mine really fast so I can get my hand out of there so then you guys can see it. So again, when you go to highlight what parts you want to keep, we're going to start with quadrant one. So this part right here. And then what other quadrant can we go to? Four, good. And you might be like, but Hannah's cool. Couldn't we also do quadrant two? Like if, instead of four, couldn't we do one and two? But remember, tangent is an odd function, and so it's going to follow that same pattern, one and four. Do you guys get what I'm saying? Like, do you see how one and two could also work? Like, it would pass the vertical line to us, but it's an odd function, so we're going to use one and four. All right, and then domain and range. What is the domain going to be? Yeah, everything. Remember how that was the range before and now it's the domain? Question? All right, and then the range, it's downwards to upwards. Now it's gonna be negative pi over two to positive pi over two. Brackets are parentheses though for that. So why will these ones be parentheses? Yeah, there's asymptotes. It's never going to actually reach those values. And then last one. It's going to look real similar to tangent. Um, again, you're going to count by fourths because cotangent only goes halfway around. And cotangent is x over y. So for this first one, that would be one over zero. So what is that gonna give us? Undefined. And then at pi over four, anything over itself, one, zero, negative one, undefined. Thank you. So then when you go to take that and put it on the grid, so at zero, we're gonna have an asymptote. And then one pi over four, again, that point will be kind of like floating in between there for pi over four. Uh, zero pi over two, and then, you know, so on and so forth. So once again, when we decide what parts to keep, you're always gonna start with quadrant one 
And I, I know this one kind of does bother people because they want to go into quadrant two. And I realized that would like finish this off. But what's the other quadrant we're going to go to? Because it's not two. Four, because this is an odd function. And the odd ones use one and four. Yeah. That is a really, did you guys all hear that question? Because I end up at answering that over and over. Because whenever we go to start evaluating them, I get asked that over and over again. Why can't you use the quadrant four that's up here? Here's the reason why. If you can't get to quadrant two, you can't get any further. It's like if this quadrant literally doesn't exist, you can't rotate through it to get there. It's like if this quadrant, it's like a black hole. It's like a void. There's nothing there. So if you can't, if you're blocked here and you can't rotate any further, you can't get there from that direction. You have to rotate backwards. So the only way you can get there is to go negatively. I, I will answer that a gazillion more times because whenever we go to evaluate these, I just get asked that all the time. All right, domain. Left to right, we get everything. I know it looks a little bit disjointed, but one piece picks up where the other one leaves off. So it's everything. Range, we're going downwards to upwards. So that's gonna be a negative pi over two to positive pi over two, but we're gonna have to skip over what? Zero, good. Last thing I'm gonna say here. Not that anyone would do this because I don't think you would spend your time Googling this. But if you Google the domain and range of these last two, some places will say it should be quadrants one and two. It's like you've gotten to such advanced mathematics that there's actually some gray area, like where you know you could have sort of an argument one way or the other about it. Um, but our you know our curriculum follows this. Also, I feel like it just makes sense. Like all the odd ones are in one and four, all the even ones are in one and two. That's what we're gonna go with. I'm just letting you know, if you like go out there and look into the wider world, you may find it says something like, again, you've gotten to such advanced math that there's a little bit of gray area. Welcome, you've arrived. 